Questions 1 through 4 on the 2021 Grade 12 Euclid Math Contest. What is the value of A for which A minus 1 plus 2A minus 3 is equal to 14? A minus 1 plus 2A minus 3 is equal to 14. So that means 3A minus 4 is equal to 14. 3A is equal to 18 and therefore A is equal to 6. What are the two values of c for which c squared minus c plus 2c minus 3 is equal to 9? c squared minus c plus 2c minus 3 is equal to 9. So that means c squared plus c minus 12 is equal to 0. This factors cc4, 3 plus negative. So that means c is either 3 or negative 4. Determine all values of x for which 1 over x squared plus 3 over 2x squared is equal to 10. 1 over x squared plus 3 over 2x squared is equal to 10. So if I multiply top and bottom by 2, I'll get a common denominator, and that will be 2 plus 3 over 2x squared is equal to 10, and that would be 5 is equal to 20x squared, and therefore x squared is 5 over 20. So that means that is a quarter. So if I take the square root of both sides, x would be a uh, square root of one fourth is a half, but plus or minus. What is the sum of the digits of the integer equal to 10 to the power of 3 plus 1 squared? 10 to the power of 3 plus 1 all squared. Well, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000 plus 1 all squared. So that's 1, 0, 0, 1, all squared. And if you square that, you get 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1. Now the sum of the digits of this number is 1 plus 2 plus 1, and that is 4. A bakery sells small and large cookies before a price increase. The price of each small cookie is $1.50, and the price of each large cookie is $2.00. The price of each small cookie is increased by 10% and the price of each large cookie is increased by 5%. What is the percentage increase in the total cost of a purchase of two small cookies and one large cookie? So small was initially $1.50 and the large cookie was initially $2. So there's a price increase. This one, the small one, is increased by 10%. So you multiply by 1.1. And that will give me 1.65. That's the new price. And then the large cookie is increased by 5%. So that's going to be 1.05. And that you multiply by 2. So that gives me a price of 2.1. So now let's talk about what is the price of two small cookies and one large cookie. So 2s plus 1l. Initially, it would have been 2 times 1.5 plus 2. So that is 5. And then now after the discount, it's 2 times 1.65 plus 2.1. And that is 5.4. So we are asked to compare these two prices. It obviously increased by 40 cents, right? But what is that as a percentage? Well, 40 cents divided by the original amount and that gives me 0 0.08. In terms of a percentage, that's 8%. Quing is twice as old as Reina. Quing is four years older than Paolo. The average age of Paolo, Quing, and Reina is 13. Determine their ages. So, Q is equal to 2R, and Q is equal to P minus 4. And then we can manipulate that and say that P is equal to Q plus 4. And they've also told me that the average is 13. So P plus Q plus R divided by 3 is 13. So that means 2R, well P is going to be Q plus 4, so 2R plus 4. 
So P would be 2R plus 4, plus Q, which is 2R, and then plus R, all over 3, and that is 13. So the numerator looks like it's 5R plus 4, and then if you cross multiply, you get 39 here. So 5R is equal to 35, and therefore R is equal to 7. Now I can calculate the other ages. Q is 2R, so that's 14. And P is 2R plus 4, so that would be 14 plus 4, which is 18. So those are the three ages. In the diagram, PQRS is a quadrilateral. What is its perimeter? Well, from the symmetry of this diagram, if I can figure out that side, I'll be able to figure out the perimeter because those are all going to be the same. So the perimeter would essentially just be 4x. All right, well, this is 5, and that's 12, so that's a Pythagorean triple. 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared. So that, oops, I gave you the answer. It's x squared. I just know that Pythagorean triple so well. So x squared is 25 plus 144, and that's 169, and therefore x is indeed 13. So P is equal to 4 times 13, and that is 52. In the diagram, A has coordinates 0, 8. Also, the midpoint of AB is M39, and the midpoint of BC is N76. What is the slope of AC? Well, A is 0, 8, and M is 3, 9. And B we don't know, so I'll just call it AB for now. So now we can use the midpoint formula to figure out A and B. So A plus 0 over 2 is equal to 3. So that means A is 6. And then B plus 8 over 2 is equal to 9. So B plus 8 is equal to 18. B is 10. So that means this is 6, 10. All right. N they gave me is 7, 6, and then C I have to figure out. So I'll just call that AB again. Why not? Again, using the midpoint formula, uh, A plus 6 divided by 2 would be equal to 7. So A plus 6 is 14, and therefore A is 8. And then B plus 10 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So B plus 10 is equal to 12. B is equal to 2. So this would be 8 and 2. Okay, now we can figure out the slope. The slope of AC, that is going to be rise over run. So 8 minus 2 over 0 minus 8, and that's 6 over negative 8, which is negative 3 over 4. The parabola with the equation y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 4x plus c has a vertex of v118. The parabola intersects the y-axis at d and the x-axis at e and f. Determine the area of triangle DEF. Well, y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 4x plus c. Let's get it in that form that allows me to get the vertex. So that would basically be... Um, minus 2, factor that out, and we have x squared minus 2x plus c. And then you complete the square, you remember how to do that factor, uh, you take half of that coefficient and then you square it. So half of that would be minus 1, so you square that, which is just 1, and then immediately you have to subtract it. And that allows me to factor that really nicely. So minus 2x minus 1 squared, and then don't forget to kick that out, but before you do, you have to multiply by that coefficient. So that's going to be plus 2 plus c. So from this, you can figure out that the vertex in this form is 1, 2 plus c. And they told me that was 1, 18. So obviously that means that 2 plus c is equal to 18. So c is equal to 16. All right, so that means my equations are basically y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. And if you want it in this form, it would be y is equal to minus 2x minus 1 squared plus 18. Okay, let's figure out the triangle now. So the triangle basically 
is going to be, looks like the X and Y intercepts. So we can do that, that's not a problem. So to get D, that's where it intersects the Y axis. So if it intersects the Y axis, we have to set X equal to zero. If I set X equal to zero there, immediately I get that Y is equal to 16. So it's up here somewhere, zero, 16, and that is D. To get E and F, that's where they cross the X axis. So that means you set Y equal to zero. So I'll use that form, it's a little bit easier. Set that equal to zero, and you get minus two x minus one squared plus 18. So two x minus one squared is equal to 18, and therefore x minus one squared is equal to nine. x minus one therefore is equal to plus or minus three. x would be either four or negative two. So here's negative two and here's four. And that is E and F. All right. So this is the triangle that we have to figure out the area of. Connect the dots here. And let's just use our formula, 1 half base times height. Area would be 1 half base times height. The base looks like it goes from minus 2 to 4, so that's 6. And then the height is top to bottom there, which is 16. So that looks like 3 times 16, which is 48. If 3 times 8 to the power of x plus 5 times 8 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 61, what is the value of the real number x? 3 times 8 to the power of x plus 5 times 8 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 61. Well, if you collect like terms, this would be 8 times 8 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 61. 8 is 2 to the power of 3, and that is also, of course, 2 to the power of 3, but that's raised to the power of x. Well, this is going to be 2 to the power of 3. This will be 2 to the power of 3x. And then using exponent laws, you would add those, so 3 plus 3x, like that. And then now, the bases are the same, so that means the exponents are the same. So 3 plus 3x is equal to 61. 3x is equal to 58. And therefore, x is equal to 58 over 3. For some real number m and n, the list 3n squared, m squared, and 2 times n plus 1 squared consists of three consecutive integers written in increasing order. Determine all possible values of m. Well, we have 3n squared, we have m squared, and then we have 2 times n plus 1 all squared, like that. And they're saying that these are consecutive integers, so x, x plus 1, and x plus 2 would be how they would look like. And I can make some equations here. 3n squared plus 1, therefore, would be m squared. And then m squared plus 1 would be equivalent to 2n plus 1 squared. Okay, I think I can just substitute this here. And that should be sufficient. So that means m squared plus 1 is equal to 2 times n plus 1 squared. m squared, well, that's just this guy. 3n squared plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 times n squared plus 2n plus 1. 3n squared plus 2 is equal to 2n squared plus 4n plus 2. Bring everything to one side. We have n squared minus 4n equals 0. The 2's cancel. Okay, so that means n, if you factor it out, is n minus 4 there. So that gives me two solutions, either 0 or 4. Okay, let's plug it into there to get the values for m, because that's what we've been asked. Determine all possible values of m. All right, when n is equal to 0, it looks to me that m squared would be equal to just 1, and therefore m is going to be plus or minus 1. When n is equal to 4, that looks like 3 times 4 squared plus 1 is equal to m squared. So m squared would be 16 times 3, 48, plus 1, 49, and therefore m would be plus or minus 7. So those are my looks like four values for m.
plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 7.